Wait, I can go in, guys. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay, okay, I'm looking. Okay, okay I, got I got it. Rumble, rumble, hey, rumble, 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 rumble. Nice, nice, nice. We're coming in. I'm on okay. Nasus. Okay, I have lantern in case you get caught. Watch I have Nasus. Watch Nasus. Watch Nasus. I got a stun. I got a stun. I got a stun. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Good. Nice. Nice. No, don't take mid tower. Take mid tower. And welcome back to the show. Freak here with Chowster from Counter Logic Gaming coming off of the first win of Super Week. So you guys are making the third place playoff run. Look good for you guys so far. Are you going to continue this run through the Super Week? Definitely. We came into Super Week thinking we can go definitely 4-1 or 5-0. So what was your preparation like? You guys had a week off last weekend. Uh, what's preparing for Super Week been like for you guys? We're just trying to play like certain team comps, like grind out a few, get really comfortable on them, and just be able to execute well. Like a lot of our early problems there in the season, like we're just really inconsistent and we constantly make mistakes. And if we can just try and like focus on those a little more, maybe we can become a stronger team consistently. So you're practicing more to like get CLG a better team than practicing for Super Week or for playoffs? I think I think our practice has always been just to be become a better team overall because we're not like Super Week. We didn't have to do like 5-0 or die. You know, it's not like yeah. we're gonna get kicked out of playoffs. But at the same time, we just always want to get better. And we didn't put any like specific deadlines or anything special for this week. Okay, so then talk to me about this match you, you came into. Because you said you, don't, you didn't really prepare specifically for each match. But uh, kind of surprised me that you didn't ban Riven away. Uh, and also Shifter brought out a new champion with Ziggs. Tell me if any of those surprised you. Uh, personally, I know a lot of teams put a lot of emphasis into banning Riven. But I think whenever Zion wins with Riven, it's not... I mean, he's a good Riven player, but... Their team comes together, Riven just takes advantage of the enemy mistakes, and also people are just really unfamiliar with the matchup. But right now, with like the current OP top lanes, Riven kind of gets overshadowed, especially with Nian's champion pool. So I felt like even if they get Riven, like it's not a big deal. And also the Ziggs pick, I mean, we're not used to playing against it at all. So actually, we had a lot of problems like ending the game because Ziggs turtles so well. But we weren't too surprised by the pick. So then talk to me about how you sort of play that game out. Well, the commentators noticed that you guys had kind of a better late game team composition. Would you have actually characterized that as well for you guys? I didn't think too much about the late game. I know we scaled okay. We okay. scaled well, but the main thing is we just want to play on their vision. Because we have Nocturne, Ari, and Thresh, we just wanted to be like, okay. And they had a siege comp, so we just, we just really didn't want them to come into our base and take control of the game. We had to make sure that every time they grouped up, Zach was there, ready, and they just backed off. They scattered away. Good. Now we can control the game <laughs> instead. But I think the best thing we did that game was not let them take control of the game. So how do you actually approach that? When you come into the game, you know, okay, we can't let them take control. We've got to make sure we set all the paces. How do you get your team to do that? Like, how do you approach don't give them control? Well, the biggest thing comes from we need at least one person understanding how not to give them control. And as long as that person is able to, like, dictate it, Tell the team, like, oh, we need to do this and that, and if the team listens, then it'll be okay. But luckily, like, my team's been playing a lot this week against similar team comms. Or just in the past, we have a lot of experience playing against them, so we pretty much know what to do. Cool, so you guys made a lot of good calls in this game. I actually want to talk about how you guys perform out of the game as well. You've got a new coach in Monte Cristo. Tell me how he's sort of shaped CLG's sort of around game preparation, champion select, things like that. If I were to say uh, CLG's past like organizing, organization skills for like LCS games, tournaments, we're really just like, we just wing it. And <laughs> when a, a sixth man comes along who you have to respect too, because he's your coach. Like I could be like the smartest, smartest person on the team, Link could be the smartest person on the team. And then when we say something, everyone's just gonna be like, nah, it's like, eh, just brush it aside because we're teammates. And then, mm -hmm. but when a sixth man comes around and says it, it just, everyone just treats it differently. Like, oh, you're right, you know? Because it's come, they treat it as more objective, not biased. And Monty's really technical with his analysis. So he'll just, we know a lot of these things. We actually know basically all the things Monty tells us, we already know. Mm -hmm. But we put zero emphasis on it. Like when our team comps make no sense, after the game, we're like, oh man, our team comp really blew. <laughs> but during champs, like, we're just like, oh yeah, yeah, that sounds all right. So it's just like our process was terrible. and. Monty's just helping us fix our thought process. Cool, so I'm glad that's gone, that's gone a lot better for you guys. You're, of course, now in, in third place right here in the season, looking good to go into the playoffs. So tell me, how do you expect the rest of Super Week to go? I have no idea how the rest of Super Week will go, but I think for CLG, we will, we will be doing really well this week. Cool, all right, so last question for you. Um, 
kind of talking about how CLG's progressed through the season, but also you as well coming back into the support role. Uh, how's that been sort of shaping up as sort of, sort of rekindling that flame? Uh, I think I originally I thought I was going to play a lot. It would uh, transition a lot easier into support role because I played it so much in the past. But apparently playing jungler for an entire season made me really think like, I was a melee support jungler, so it's like, oh crap, I gotta get in there, you know? That's like early in the season, I would die so much on Thresh. I just always get into the thick of things, mm -hmm. and I'm like, now I'm on the role of someone playing Soraka all the time, right? So I can't be doing those kind of things. So slowly, if I just played and grinded more games, I just slowly transitioned. Cool, and it seems to have worked really, really well for you, so congrats on that, and congrats to your team as well. Thank you very much for the time, and of course, congrats to CLG for doing so well. But we've, of course, got five more games today, so to help set that up, let's send it back to the guys at the desk. Thank you very much, Freak, and that is a fantastic beard. But now it's time for our second game of the day, Team Dignitas versus Curse. So far this summer, Edward and his comrades have won two of the three games these teams have played. But last time they went head-to-head, -head, it was I'm a Cutie Pie who shot Dignitas over Curse. Yeah, I'm a Cutie Pie had an incredible game as Ezra when they played last. He had a hand in 16 of Dignitas' 17 kills, and he never died that game. In fact, over the last couple of weeks, Cutie Pie has been on an absolute tear. He's actually second in the league for kills on the season at 120. And for Dignitas, they'll need Cutie Pie to keep racking up the kills if they want to keep their hopes of finishing third alive. And Dignitas has a very difficult schedule this week. They're losing the head-to-head -head series against four of their five opponents this week. So if the trends continued and they kept losing to those teams, they would actually go one and four this week. And that would actually put them in serious jeopardy of missing the playoffs. Curse, on the other hand, knows the best they can finish is third place after losing all three of their games in week eight, unfortunately. Yeah. Even though they went 0-3, mm. they had the most difficult schedule of any team in Week 8. Right. They had to take on Cloud9, Vulcan, and then TSM, the first, second, and third place teams in the league. This week, their schedule gets a significant amount easier. They play four teams that they've already beat twice this summer. So, in the opposite trend of Dignitas, if their hit trends hold true, they'd actually go 4-1 and one and be in prime position to make the playoffs. Absolutely. And while Cop and crew have a promising schedule ahead of them this week, Dignitas's Crumbs believes that Curse has a lot of work to do if they don't want to start off the week with a loss to Team Dig. Maybe Dignitas, uh, we pretty much just have to go in with a good mentality and just try to play the highest level that we can perform. We just need to practice as much as we can uh, the before game and just get our game. I think we're 2-1 two -two against them, so we have more chance to win. Curse improved over the beginning of the season, and then we played against them and we crushed them. So I still think they have a lot of work to do, and frankly, I think that no matter how much work they can put in, with the work that we're putting in, they're not going to be able to beat us. And we'll see if Crumbs and Crew can crush again or if his prediction simply crumbles. Now let's take a look at the starting lineups. On the blue side, it's Dignitas. Kiwi Kid in the top lane, Crumbs leaving a trail in the jungle, Scar in mid, Cutie Pie at 80 carry, and Patoy on support. And on the red side, Rib, we have Team Curse with Voy Boy in the top lane, St. Ficious in the jungle, Nijacki in mid, Cop on AD, and Edward on support. And before we get into the game, let's first check out who you think is going to win. According to lolesports.com, 57% of you click that plus thumbs up for Curse, and you think they will win this one. Very interesting, Riv, because Curse is 9 of 14 coming into this game. But they have been trending upwards, as everyone keeps saying. They've been trending upwards, and why are they still 9 of 14? Uh, I actually also feel like they've been trending upwards. They just haven't been able to win games. They're playing games very close, and then Super losing close. them. It just hasn't... They haven't gotten everything together, so they're another team that's right on the brink of turning a lot of games around. Whereas Dignitas is another team who plays a lot of close games. Yes, they were the only, they're actually the only team last week to go 2-1. and one. Mm. Vulcan and Cloud9 both went 3-0. and oh. But they won close games that they looked like they were losing. And with how close these standings are, sh even though Dignitas is technically up on Curse, it could all change real soon. And you got to think of how much close games are going to matter this week. Because we see, you know, Team Solomid or Dignitas come out of one of those close games, or anybody really that wins a close mm -hmm. one, and they are happily stressed, if you will. They look worn out. That It's yeah. a long match, and it definitely takes a toll on you. So this is still first game of the day for a lot of these guys. Second for us, yep. obviously, but they have a long way to go. And they are going to have to make sure to conserve a bit of energy. And I guess... <laughs> It's kind of practice for what they're going to be up against if they make it into the playoffs or even the world playoffs because mm -hmm. yeah. that's a lot of games that they're going to be playing. We're already looking at the LCS playoffs for teams like this 
They're going to have to win two best of threes if they want to make it in over a couple of days. That's six games, whereas we have five games just right. for the Super Week here. And then if they make it into Worlds, the group stage lasts like five or six days. So Just a little bit of play time. Good. Yeah. That we gotta have to get comfortable gotta in a new chair. Get practicing. Absolutely. So things that you know have been coming up for these teams in the past. We like we said, Curse has been playing well. Their games last week, like I said, versus TSM was super close. They had a gold lead pretty much the whole time, and then it came down to pretty much base on base fight, and it went towards TSM. And one thing that I've noticed about Curse's compositions is yeah. it becomes they, they create a mosh pit composition. It'll bounce you around and do a lot, but it's not a war zone. It doesn't do the damage to finish the fight. And the other teams have been taking advantage of that. And specifically when Saint plays junglers like Zack, they'll do a Zack Shen and they'll initiate, but they'll be three miles ahead of the rest of the team yep. and the team won't be able to finish them off. And occasionally they had that amazing ballista combo where they put the ball onto Zack and they were able to combo it Dive off. It on it's in. just, like we said, so close to actually working, but never quite finding the right synergy. So the Cassidy finds a respect ban here for Skara. Usually on that Cassidy mm -hmm. pick, it draws a bit of attention from Crumbs in the jungle to make sure that's a safe to level six lane. So Crumbs gets a little bit of a free up off of that uh, off that ban too. Little surprised that they went for the Cassidy ban because Skara's had very mixed results yeah. with it. But it's also something to throw Skara off of comfort, which is a very important <laughs> thing. <laughs> what was that for? Was that Kiwi Kid? Somebody just cried out, no. That was funny. We heard it. I know we heard it. <laughs> it has to be. Yeah. Maybe it was Cop. He wants to go back onto his Twitch. It, sounded, it could have been Cop. It sounded like a Cop. I think it was Cop. It sounded like a Cop. That sounded weird. Especially since Cop started the season with Draven. Draven got his passive changed. A lot changed. of people did. Everyone kind of, all the Draven players defaulted back to Twitch. Boom. So Cop, no. Cutie Pie went to Graves. He's like, Cutie Pie's whatever. been all over Graves. <laughs> he loves that guy. It's, it, and, or Ezreal. Like, like Kobe says, if you hit yeah. the skill shots, it's going to be a lot of damage. <laughs> That's why they're called skill shots, because they take skill. That I is think that absolutely correct. Yeah. Bingo, bingo. We got a game Thresh here. Thresh is still out. Edward could be getting his Thresh Prince here. Looks like Void Boy still with the lock in. Zach is up, and Void Boy has been playing a heck of a lot of top lane, Zach. Yeah, I want to see how Curse responds to that Elise pick, too, because that's, that's the new Elise. Said we're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Spider yeah, lane is substantially in. easier to kill now. The health has been dropped dramatically on them, and then they get some scaling arm and magic resist. Also, Repel is not nearly as good at chasing. Not only, like before when you repelled, once you started falling, you could like chase after them while you're in the air. Yeah, and, and that's why you'd see distance. like the repel circle, and then like outside the repel circle, she just land. What? That doesn't happen. It's anymore. on me! It's on me! Just like spiders. <laughs> How did it get here? But now it's, I guess it's more reasonable. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I think you I'd still get locked reasonable. up. I feel like I'm going to see a Ryze coming out here because at least Ryze always is a great composition together, especially with a Zack lock up so much on that team. Yeah. I kind of like that Jackie strayed away from Orion on this one, especially with these compositions like Dignitas runs that can leap, that can jump, that can get out of things mm -hmm. because Command Shockwave when missed is a detriment to the fight. And Dignitas has had some slightly shaking team fighting as well where they're kind of all over the place. And you're going to contain him a bit with that Requiem, I'd have to say. You're able to hit him at all, from all angles of the map. I want to see if Skara can find a pick that can outmaneuver Karthus, otherwise he's going to be in a bit of trouble. Maybe he'll go for a kill. We haven't seen him play Zed in a heck of a long time. They used to send him to solo lanes with Karthus, with Diana. Diana seemed to be too much like an all-in. The team can't get with her. Mm -hmm. We've heard kind of what he did like play Diana goes last off a little week. bit. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, He did. He brought that back out. So maybe. They have, they have some options here. He's definitely been expanding the champion pool. He's been trying. Yes. Trying to practice the swimming. Pop those swimmies off. I really wonder, though. So Saint's gone standard with Nasus. Yeah. Nasus Karthus is tremendous amounts of in-team fight damage. They're trying to bring the extra crowd control. This is Curse uh, with Varus. And then Thresh Prince. I really like the things that Curse has been going for, whereas Dignitas doesn't have their co cohesion decided yet. Zack and Elise are very generic picks. They both dive in, and it's really down to Scar and I'm a Cutie Pie's picks how their team actually develops. If they go with something like that Zed, they are very all-in, not much protection, mm -hmm. which leaves Cutie Pie and Patoy on a bit of an island for themselves. And you know what we may see here from Dig? They could be, it could take that Zed or take another, you know, 
jump assassin. Assassin. Mm -hmm. There's no H in there. I think like they should. Zed, like a cast. But then they could run the 2v1 mid and leave Scar on that lane. Because they have not done that in a long time. No, that's something they used to do a lot of. Absolutely. But it hasn't been working for them lately. Mm. This makes sense to me, though. Amakuni Pai had that great Ezreal game already mm -hmm. against Curse. And then everyone else dives. And Cutie Pie is actually very good at fending for himself. Strong picks there. Let's see what he can do. Definitely makes plays for the team, like you say, fend for himself. And Ezreal, once he gets to that item threshold of blue build, can easily fend for himself. Yes, Boy Boy picking up the cannon. Definitely a favorite pick of mine. A little overboard there. But we do see the Zed coming in for Skara as well in that last pick for them. Alrighty, so Curse, very heavy on the AoE damage. A little, we'll go just like, a little bit heavy. Go like this. Whereas Dignitas has three people that are going to try and dive through it, but if Curse just does something as simple as sticking together while Dignitas tries to dive in, Dignitas has no choice but to become involved in that AOE fest. It's going to be if Curse tries to almost dive onto I'm a Cutie Pie, that's when they're going to be struck, and that's that's going to be a very difficult thing for Curse to handle because they love diving so, so much that it's gonna be hard for them to hold back and realize that they actually need to sit back to take advantage of Dignitas' composition. A previous game last week, actually, Kobe stated, you know, there was a great initiation, but he wasn't initiating for anything. It was it was Saint on Zach because yeah. he was too far ahead. So with that Nasus, they'll be able to walk it in, like you said, but I feel like all the jump again, Dignitas loves these super mobile teams and they're so chaotic in team fights mm -hmm. where you need AoE to count. Dignitas is near the top of the board in all of the kill stats, death stats, assist <laughs> stats. They don't have the top killers in the league, but I mean, Scar is 109 kills. He's in fifth place. Yeah. Cutie Pie, 120 in second. Kiwi Kid's top in deaths, but it's because they fight so much. Yep. Scar is near the top of the league in deaths, too. I think he's top 10, but it's just and the way they like play. it's kind of like a power, chaos, power of numbers chaos. thing for Kiwi Kid, too. He may die a lot one game, but he did great the next game on the mm -hmm. same champion. So it's going to even out at some point. We're going to be hopping into the match here. Come in. It's going to be Dignitas versus Curse up on the Rift. We are jumping into the game as well. Rivington and Jat here bringing you the second matchup of Super Week here. And we are on to the Rift. And the Dorn Shield is an item that Dignitas has been buying a lot of, as well as other teams from around the world. But Scar is going for the Red Elixir as well on Zed because he wants that early kill potential on, on Nijak in the lane. So both that matchup and Kiwi Kid versus Voy Boy will be very interesting to me if they decide to go with the traditional heads up because I actually think those will be very skill intensive matchups. You know that's something that always amazes me like completely that you come to lane with a red pot and you can sometimes still take advantage of the kill. You're telegraphing that you want to kill that person mm -hmm. as you level and they sometimes still get it. It's always been something that blows my mind. Sometimes it's just, <laughs> it's the reason they build the Red Elixir. Another thing it does normally when you build the Red Elixir is it tells the enemy jungler, this guy's probably going to be a little bit aggressive. Mm. But I don't think Saint can really do much against that with that Nasus pick. Right. I, like, I do like the choice in this instance of the Red Elixir because there's not much, even though, yes, he's telegraphing his attentions, there's not too much Curse can do to stop him from trying to execute on that. Looks like Jackie is facing a lot of turret farm this game. It's going to be Sona helping out Skara with the golems towards the bot, or guarding for now. And then it looks like Skara will take that solo lane for himself. Yeah, maybe that's not going to happen at all. Maybe we're not going to see Karthus versus Zed. Maybe we're going to see Skara versus Voiboy, the old Dignitas teammates. Speaking too soon. I should have just let it go. Yeah, they swap back. Didn't have to. Power in numbers here for Curse. Looks like they may want to get a deep ward in, but it will be a known deep ward. You can see Kiwi Kid positioning for safety here, but just for a little bit of vision as well. So there were a very small number of wards that got placed early on in the game. And Crumbs is basing this off of the invade that Curse had just done to their blue buff. This is going to be most likely just another example of the vertical exchange of buffs. Instead of taking your blue and red buff from your own jungle, you take one from the enemies and one from your own. At the end of the day, that doesn't really do much. It's a little bit of slowdown, but like yeah. I said. It actually does slow the junglers down slightly. Not too much to worry about off of that. You can see St. Vicious returning back on his side, going towards that red buff. The wards are down on that side, so it's going to be Crumbs 
Oh, not even. Crumbs going for his own red because it was the blue they stole. I was going to say, they're going to see Crumbs in their own jungle and not do anything. St. Vicious getting his. We'll have to see if he goes for the top lane, 3v1, or the help in the bottom lane because he is already up to that top side. Yeah, we've talked about in the first game the turret changes, and I think we're going to keep hitting mm -hmm. back on this all weekend because this is actually the first real competitive level we've seen on the 3.10 patch. The OGN League is sitting on 3.9, so both the North American and the European LCS are the main leagues that have these turret changes in. Extra armor for the first eight minutes of the game, and how is that going to impact jungler and 2v1 lane choices? Because thus far, the 2v1 lanes are just as prevalent as ever. It's just a matter of how do teams deal and react to them. We'll have to see how Voiboy actually reacts throughout the game. Kennen running teleport, not something we see Voiboy running too much. He's no. always said he likes to stay in the lane, make things happen in the situation he can, and then help later. But now he's going to be helping as soon as he can. Also, from my experience watching and even playing with Voiboy, when he runs teleport, he actually has trouble making the right decision of when to go in. Mm -hmm. He will very often be winning his lane, even with teleport, because he's such a tremendous laner but then teleport for no good reason because he has it instead of using it opportunistically. You can see Nijacky trying to do that Karthus farm, going back for the Wraiths every time he can, which means Saint may be spending a little bit more time in that bottom lane to soak up experience and keep himself in this game. Both junglers are three right now, so nobody falling behind there. CS still pretty even, only a four or five lead throughout the lanes. Yeah, these turrets are not taking much damage, but that's because once again, Got we're four seeing more minutes of that. We're seeing the defensive lane play from the junglers as well. They're not ganking so much as they are walking into the lanes and clearing away. The bu double buffs just looking pretty for right now. Not really use them or able to activate anything. The stone picked up here for Crumb, so he will be able to continue around the jungle a little bit more and maybe make use of those camps instead of staying in that top lane. Looks like Kiwi Kid will be all right to fend for himself. Crumbs, maybe going mid, or maybe just be going top. Oh, he's going to actually deny Wraiths. And this could be another game where Curse is just waiting for the dragon fight. Mm -hmm. Ken and Karthus, Nasus, Varus, just all together. If you catch someone 5v5 in the dragon pit, you're most likely going to win that fight. Whereas Dignitas would, they, sure, they have Crescendo and Let's Bounce, but just not nearly the comboing potential that Curse has in what could be a mid game dragon fight. As long as this game maintains in the laning phase and we're not seeing aggressive jungling action from Crumbs or St. Vicious, yeah. this actually plays in the favor of, of Curse because the first major moment of action would be at that dragon as long as the ganks don't come. And you know something we have to look at as this team fight phase gets on? One offensive summoner spell for Curse that ignite on Edward mm. because it's, an, it's a teleport and an exhaust and a barrier coming in for the rest. And I wonder how much time Crumbs is going to be spending over there. Edward wanted to get rid of him by throwing that lantern in the brush. And that's slowing him down, whereas St. Vicious is just level 5, helping to push that lane. This is it's all going very well for Curse Rift. Kiwi Kid taking a bit of damage up top. He knows he can take more than the rest with that passive to jump them or get them away from the turret as well when he goes back in that south division. Six minutes into this. Just about the same consistent pressure. Good damage on to Void Boy as Sona. You're going to get those power cords out. He's expecting to take that damage, stays in, and continues the pressure as they finally back off. Crumbs has been farming his face off here. He's only four ahead, but he's been not soaking up lanes. He's getting all the camps mm -hmm. in the jungle, and that's more experience. He spent a little bit of time up top, right, and then a little bit of time ganking, but obviously more time farming the jungle than St. Fishes has. And hopefully he can use that to his advantage, because he needs to, especially with those lower health spiderlings, make his impact seen sooner rather than later because mm -hmm. I don't think those spiderlings are going to be living very long in team fights and that actually hurts Elise a fair bit overall. And I was actually wrong, it's Saint. Saint's about three to four minions alone or two camps himself to getting that level six, having objective presence, but it looks like Dig Ooh. is going to take that into their own hands right away. Going one step before Curse is ready because Curse has the dragon fight team, yeah. just not at this time. Cop and Edward are both top lane right now, one between against Kiwi Kid. And because of how strong the turrets are and because of Crumbs' early game babysitting, that turret's not even close to going down. And Dignitas really just grabbed the dragon from under Curse's noses. I feel like Curse still wants to go and make that dragon fight happen since St. Vicious went back Ooh. to base to buy a pink ward to clear out the dragon here. Too late. Yeah, that was picked off. 
just a few seconds ago. St. Nijacky was actually backed for that entire time, so a very good communication call by Dignitas there. And playing the mid lane by Skara to have to pressure Nijacky out. Pink Ward's in the top lane as well, coming in for Voiboy to make sure they are now safe. That was actually the AD carry support, so they're going to swap it out. Yeah, this is... That was a really good play by Dignitas, I gotta say. They needed something like that since the lanes weren't necessarily going in their favor. Kiwi Kid was getting 1v2 better than Voiboy was, 39 to 25 when you compare that farm. Even Skara with the Red Elixir start, even though he hadn't consumed it, mm -hmm. wasn't putting any emphasis on stopping Nijacky. But they made the Dragon Call and they made it work, so that gives them a slight edge coming out of this early game. We'll have to see how they use it. Dignitas does usually have that definitive strategy for the first few steps. Once they get to that leap in the mid game, you see things slow down. We saw it kind of happen in the first game of the day. Still, again, a very slow matchup with the turrets being a bit stronger. That eight minute target hitting. Gotta watch the see stuff. Nien, or yeah. Kiwi Kid rather, getting hit up a little bit. He gets out, but Batoy, Batoy is gonna be hit up in the bottom lane. He is trying to do what he can. The Requiem comes down. They were baiting that for crumbs. He may still be in range. They get the flash. Doesn't decide to take the lantern. And they get out safe. That was a very awkward fight down in the bottom lane. Batoy. You heard the crescendo sound go off, but mm. the ultimate didn't go because he died right before it would come in. Maybe Scar can make something happen here because Cops flashes down, but with Barrier up and the Threat Shield, I don't think oh, they can make anything happen. Oh, no vision to St. Vicious and Dignitas. A little aggressive on this one. This is giving Curse the opportunity to push up the mid lane as well. Just a solid series of events for Curse happening, and Dignitas did not have the right answer for it. Gonna have to keep an eye on tricky wards being placed down here by Dig. We're actually gonna see yeah. where this what crescendo, happened. what happened. Yeah, so Patoy just got locked down and knocked back and then seemed to just kind of Ooh. freeze for a little bit, trying to find the right and the flash the right coming ultimate in from area. crumbs too. Yeah. A lot expended for the thought of that. Crumbs, I don't think it was really anybody's fault, but the communication itself that crumbs wasn't as close as it needed to be for that. Yeah, it's probably just trying to bait a little bit extra because they yeah. were setting up a gank. Yeah. It was Did, worth it. Didn't work out. Tr kind of worth it. Not worth it. Didn't work out for him that time. The yeah. first blood going over to Thresh. So it's not going to hurt too bad. They did get the combined gold of the assist onto Cop, so he's got a little extra in his pocket there. And St. Fish is actually coming up to maybe stop Kiwi Kid if they get the stun, <laughs> oh, and they no. do! Throws down the slicing Maelstrom. He is going to let's bounce, but they're going to party along with him. Take these out. Who's going to get it? Who are they going to give it they to? They should give You're it to You're going to be nice, boy. Saint? Yes. Good guy, Saint. That was smart. <laughs> that was what we call a good play. <laughs> because Saint has tried in the past. He used to kind of be known as the carry jungler. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But in games this season where they've kind of struggled after he's picked up a lot of kills early, it's very true that when Voiboy does well for Curse, Curse wins. When Saint does well for Curse, you never really know what's going to happen. So smart move there, giving the kill. Because it was to be given since the blobs weren't going anywhere. Right to I mean, Voiboy. You're looking to get impact out of Voiboy. You put Teleport on an AoE ultimate that's usually used with a flash to go in. It's going to be good if he gets kills. Looks like he's going for an early haunting guy. to start this off within his build. 11 minutes in, see the pressure in the bottom lane from Cutie Pie is just up to the turret, but they have evened up the ADs and supports in the lane. And I actually want to talk about I'm a Cutie Pie's build a little bit, mm -hmm. because he did this in week eight as well, where he's doing the blue build Ezreal, but he starts with a Brutalizer. And one of the weaknesses about building a tier very early on in the game is that your early game power is nullified. Yeah. You're not doing anything with that extra mana, but when you rush the Brutalizer, you're kind of balancing a really good early game item with not that good of an early game item. So he's still a strong presence despite getting the early tier because he went for the Brutalizer. It hurts him at the very end of the game when he's just got the Black Cleaver a little bit, but it's good for him right now and for most of the buildup. Skara sitting on only 100 gold, so he's just gone back. He himself has the Brutalizer's Brutalizer as well. There we go. But once he gets that Blade of the Rune King, we know what Zeds do. We have watched it all League of Legends long. I won't even name just a specific league because it happens yeah. everywhere. It becomes an impact, a playmaker, and that's going to be Voidboy and Skara trying to get those one-on-one, -on -one, the picks, the picks back and forth. I can't wait until they get those items under their belt. And it's only going to be like another mm -hmm. eight minutes. It's not going to be too long. Skara's still sitting on that red elixir, and he's hoping to catch Nijaki checking for him right now because Scar has been missing in mid lane for so long that 
Curse is thinking that a dive is coming bottom, and therefore Nijaki would want to move towards there to counter gank. That's why Scar was waiting in that bush. But Nijaki's not falling for the bait. He's very much in farm mode, and he actually goes and checks it now when Scar's returned to the lane. So just the sink isn't there for Dignitas. So two kills so far in the favor of Curse. Coming up big onto these ones. St. Vicious having a hand in that as well. 13 minutes onto this as they make sure it's going to be safe to grab this up, but it will be pressure from Dignitas here to come out of the blue. They may force this smite. Yeah, and Scar would want to land a skill on someone, but that was just such an investment by Curse to go in and protect that blue, and St. Vicious actually ends up smiting it away from Nijaki, which means That's there's no so, smite in this dragon. So good of timing by Dignitas to go in, force the smite as usual, get the dragon for themselves. Coming up with the second one there. The first one wasn't even known by Curse, so they really didn't have a specific timer for that no. one. Really played well and adapted by Dignitas. Good mind game mm -hmm. that they played right there because there was there was no intention of Dignitas actually stealing that blue buff. They were just trying to see kind of a numbers check for Curse. What do you yeah. got there? It's almost what are you, you willing wanted to use? Saint to smite, so let him have it. Once the Saint alt was burned and he used the smite, Saint Finish isn't going to fight Dignitas a dragon. Dignitas got the dragon. 14 minutes in, they are racking up the global gold, but with the CS factor coming in and a few of the kills, it's only 200 that is that deficit right now for Curse. Fighting very well. Like we said, even though Curse had that 0-3 last week, they have been able to make these games count up until that very late game mark. And right mm -hmm. now, they're keeping themselves on top in kills and positioning here. They just got to start the objectives now. And we got to touch back on that team fight that Curse really wanted. They have so much AoE damage, mm -hmm. but Dignitas is also highly mobile. The problem, though, with Dignitas is Zack, Elise, and Zed all turn into melees when they're going in for the kills. And if all Curse does is somewhat huddle together, they can punish that dive greatly. But as soon as Curse puts themselves in that middle ground where they're actually going for I'm a Cutie Pie and Patoy, they expose their back line to all of Dignitas's dives. So they have to approach team fights extremely delicate. Oh, they're going hard on the St. Vicious. I believe his ultimate is down. They know from the bottom half he will get the teleport in. The slicing oh, no. maelstrom just in range. He dodges, flashes through the maelstrom before he dies. The Requiem helps to secure the kill. And since there was a double buff on St. Ficious. That's a fresh double buff on Nijaki. So the St. Ficious smite on blue buff eventually makes it around to Nijaki. Transfer complete. That's a good move for Curse right there. Three to one as they first, or Dignitas rather, picking up their first kill, but Curse does not let it go without one of their own. Scar at 131 as we look at him just crushing down minions in mid, but that's 20 behind right now onto Nijaki, and they've really had a one-on-one -on -one lane throughout this game. We'll have to see what they can continue to do. Void Boy with that teleport down is going to be forced to pressure this top lane, and we'll see if there's any engagement from the jungler's bottom. Here comes Crumbs on his way. Mm, Scar wants to sneak in behind, but with all the... how far Curse is pushed up, they're, they're thinking about backing up a little bit. Scar is just not finding his way, and this is the reason that Nijaki is ahead of Scar in farm right now, because Scar is... that's the third or fourth time we've seen him looking for that kill bottom lane. And the third or fourth time, he's just backed off. All the while, Nijaki has been able to just farm the wave with his Qs over and over again and get that farm advantage. Maybe they're waiting for crumbs on this Skara, tiptoeing once again to that side brush. The minion's resetting in mid, and he will again venture down to that bottom lane. We're going to see if he can go for a kill on this one. It's round five Saint, of them Saint's trying this reading one. it. Even if Saint's down here, it's a 4v3 and Requiem is down. I feel like Curse might have to back away. This is a very dangerous thing. Dignitas is trying to avoid these wards, but they should just go. They want to use this window. Scar goes in right on the cop. That is a big amount of damage. The Mark will kill him. Edward now focusing, trying to huddle under the turret. They aren't getting too much huge damage, but they are able to execute with Crumbs. The backside and Dignitas making moves, a turret of their own, countered by Jackie. Yeah, I think the mid turret is more important than the bottom lane turret but the two kills are definitely good for Dignitas. Curse could have had that same trade if Cop and Edward would have recognized that Scar was missing for so long and just backed away. But they were a little bit confident since Scar had second-guessed himself so many times and didn't think the gank was coming in that magnitude of power with four people. But they were wrong. They end up getting turrets out of it. And at the end of the day, they're still even in gold.
Definitely making some good moves, able to shut down Cop on a bit of that CS he had built up in stacks on his Bloodthirster, which he got quite early in the matchup. The Sheen finally built into Cutie Pie, so he's getting a little bit of burst damage there on his Mystic Shots or his auto attacks after a skill. On both of them. Yeah. A little bit of extra... And Sheen procs. Not an ore. Yeah. So we see Negatron Cloaks coming out, respecting the magic resistance that Void Boy will have coming into this game. A that's not a very early, but it's quite early Zanyas to be able to initiate, especially with a Karthus and a Nasus coming in behind you. Yeah, they're going to be very focused. Specifically, Dignitas needs to be focused on continually finding these fights because they don't want the game to break into organization. They want to keep the chaos going throughout this game. Kiwi Kid actually choosing to go Sunfire Cape before he goes for the Visage in his build unlike the previous hmm. game that we saw. Actually, Which is strange. Against a very AP heavy team. Yeah, it's a little strange considering he's laning against Void Boy. But the early lane from Kennen is a strange mix of attack damage and ability power. Ooh. So it's not that bad of a call. Would you say nobody saw that? <laughs> Coming in, trying to get a kill on. They are able to grab mid turret and complete that vision exchange in middle. Both of them losing that first tier turret in mid. Only one stands in the outer tier for both teams in top and bottom lane. That means two turrets, means a thousand gold lead. It's very slow here. Mm. Curse can usually keep it within that two to three thousand gold lead. It's almost Vulcan-esque the way they do it and continue the fights. Yeah. They're usually able to win. I noticed this in watching a lot of their matches. Fights when they're down, five, six thousand yeah. gold. Curse can do that very frequently. And the thing is, this part of the game is so telling for them. If they can just not get picked off by Dignitas's roam, when the early turrets are down in the mid game, they're gonna be okay. And specifically, if they can find this dragon fight number three together and not get caught in a 4v5, it's gonna be tremendous for Curse's chances. Piercing Ares, er, Ares, piercing arrows, letting them know that there is vision. You see Kiwi Kid. Curse wants this fight really badly. Lock off of the elastic slingshot, another piercing arrow as they just get a bit of poke in here, allowing Kiwi Kid to tank dragon, getting a bit of his HP back from that. Oh my gosh, they are just taking pokes back and forth. Not really looking good for anybody. The ultimate hits Jackie, but he can still do it when he dies. Now Jackie is a little bit low. He won't be able to get off as much damage as, as, as he would like. If Cop can land a good Varus ultimate, it could swing this fight. But with how much damage Jackie took, I don't know if Curse is interested in this fight anymore. But Dignitas is recognizing how scared they should be of the composition anyway, and they're just staring at each other. It's almost like nobody thinks an extended engage would favor them. They just walk away. Well, they decide to push the lanes instead. <laughs> Dragon is a very dangerous point in this game for both teams because they know how much the rest of the game swings on what happens in the next few minutes. That's not something we see very often at all, Jet. Two teams There's walk the away assault. from each other. They are able to come in. Chain of Corruption locking them down. Right on top of it comes the Crescendo, and they continue this fight. Crowd control from both teams, stopping the fight for a second, but the kills finally oh. come out. The Requiem comes down. They are able to chase this one out, and it's huge kills coming in from the Requiem. The ace onto Dignitas. And that was exactly the fight that Curse wanted to happen. Dignitas tried to dive in to Curse, and Curse just sat there with their AoE. The teleport came in for Void Boy just the right time. Let's watch this fight again. Bear Assault hit five, so everyone got locked down temporarily, which nullified that crescendo right now. Yep. And then the teleport comes in, the rest of Curse is able to come in, and Void Boy cleaned with the Requiem. They did, Chris didn't have to be worried about the overall mobility of Dignitas because Dignitas grouped up on the turret for them. That was perfect for Curse. And that is crazy. We saw Nijacky half HP before that fight really coming in and he was still able to make big things happen. Curse coming out very big there. The teleport finally coming into play from Void Boy in a very big engagement. Mm -hmm. Eight to four as the game just took a very big swing. That's the second really strong teleport we've seen from Boy this game. His decision-making in the past had been questionable on teleports, but that in particular was the perfect timing. The reason that Dignitas engaged that fight in the first place was because it was a 4v5. Mm. They they essentially forgot about Void Boy's teleport. Just watching that crescendo go across. I was so nullified by the chain of corruption. It, mm -hmm. It's such an unfortunate event that half seconds and seconds can make that happen in a fight. Definitely something that will be ticking on Patoy's mind and his placement of Crescendo for next time. 
As we said, the score is eight to four, a 2,000 gold lead from all of that though. So it's still within yeah. reach. It's a bit of a sway in items. Two Zanyas now to really cause chaos in a fight and it can change a fight pretty big having that invulnerability. And even though Curse is up by only about 2,000 gold, there was about a 3,000 gold swing based off that series yeah. of events because right. they were down, I believe, okay. before that happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> I think they were down before that happened. And that's just such a huge momentum boost for Curse as they move in and have team fight confidence now. We'll see how this goes as well. Nijacky has been known to get a few kills for himself, but isn't the one to continuously carry the game for the team. He's 4-1-5 and five right now, so there is a lot of damage being put mm -hmm. on him. So he's going to have an extra job to do in finalizing those kills and continuing that. Yeah, those Nijacky items are going to be scary for the rest of Dignitas as they move in, in this game. I feel like he's going to go... He actually doesn't like Rabadons. Yeah, he did. Void and he then did maybe do, later. Jackie didn't do the tier catalyst Karthus build. Right. He instead just went straight Rod of Ages because honestly, if you go tier catalyst against Zed, you're putting yourself at a bit more risk of dying. <laughs> and he's giving him just a himself bit. a bit of Zed resistance right now with that build. It's still going to transition well late game. Even though he doesn't like Death Cap, I feel like that's the item he should be going for next. Cutie Pie faster than most. Iceborne coming out in the order of the build. So his team, he has actually got some good farm under his belt, though. He is still behind Cop, who is keeping it going. One known to have quite a bit CS throughout all of his games. He keeps it consistent. Those two looking to get some final third items under their belt, as they both have two. The Bloodthirster, Last Whisper, and that Man Immune into Iceborne. Belt. And those are Cop's two favorite items that he has built right now. And that's why Curse is trying to push this one down. Here's the second risk that Curse has. If they overdive in a fight, it allows Dignitas to put a fight back onto Whoa. them. And they're in danger of having that happen That's to them very shortly. A whole lot of free damage right there. Saint actually gets hit by a long range cocoon. Woo. Traded right back at you. Back. So both of them coming out with a skill shot poke. One other thing I want to mention about the items, too, is top of the show, we mentioned Runic Bulwark is gone from the game. Last game, we did see Locket of the Iron Solari, which is the Aegis upgrade. Mm -hmm. This game, it doesn't look like either jungler are going for it. We have the Magic Pen jungle coming out from Crumbs, and it looks like St. Fish is going straight towards Randwins for the heavy physical damage from Dignitas. This actually benefits Curse in the long run, because Curse has a huge amount of magic damage on their team. When you factor in not only the double AP from the solo lanes, but the amount of damage that comes out of Nasus's ultimate, the fact that Crumbs doesn't have that 20 magic resist or in Aegis is going to improve Curse's ch chances in team fights by a huge margin. And those team fights are something I think they need to start activating. Having the Zanyas, you saw Dignitas now is like, you guys have two of those. We're going to stop and wait for this next fight until we can mm -hmm. also wait for those to wear off. So Curse needs to start engaging these before Dignitas just scales up to where they need to be. I really wonder if Dignitas can actually make it to that point, though. With with double Zanyas already 25 minutes in and Scar not really putting his stamp on you this game yet. Zed. For for a fair bit until he can get on Cop. Right. But if Scar is diving all the way through to Cop and Curse is playing it conservatively, yeah. that's when they do the same thing they did in that ace, and they just wipe out all the divers from Dignitas once again. And they and Curse has the composition to stop that. Hard to dive a Karthus wall, hard to dive a Nasus Wither, so Cop's pretty safe in the back line. Even though these guys, like we said before, have only one offensive summoner spell on Edward. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a very Edward-like thing to do. <laughs> I like the fact actually Nijacky picked Exhaust just because he was against a kill lane, yeah. essentially, and he needed the defensive capabilities. It's It certainly hasn't <clears throat> stopped Jackie's ability to get kills as he's 4-1 on Karthus. You got to notice this farm boy boy to nian here yeah. 219 to 152 mounds ahead in that one almost a completed rabadon's death cap yeah kiwi kid dice what nian did i say he was zach no. in the last game oh i did oh my yeah. god and then i did balls on rumble it's all right we'll get there <laughs> we will <laughs> i mean it's it's a good point still though because right. boy boy has destroyed kiwi kid which is the opposite of what we saw from the last zach in a game where nian yeah. had that huge edge on Zion Spartan's Rumble. Yep. Voy Boy is well going for the Zonya's death cap combo, what looks like just maximum damage once he's able to complete that. Yeah. 
And I really think that this next dragon, unless Dignitas finds a non 5v5 fight, it's gonna be good. Huey Kid from the outside, the death mark goes down instantly onto Jackie. He zanyas the damage. It does not stack, and it looks like he's gonna be able to get a more defile. The lay waste go out, the requiem to come in and finalize a few. He gets a double before it is and goes off. He gets another one to come off of that, unless the team grabbed it. No, that's gonna be it. And that is the three kills. Assist going to Nai Jackie as well. A good opportunistic fight by Dignitas, but they just couldn't pull the trigger, and now Curse is able to push on this middle turret. Very, very good fighting coming in from Curse. We saw him down a bit of gold. They had the 3K swing. A grab onto Cutie Pie from Edward gives them a little bit to think about as they leave the base, waiting for Jackie to come back up. These guys are going to start taking everything out of the jungle. Curse is trying to go around the horn, as you say, and just get yep. everything away from Dignitas as the respawns happen. That fight was just another example of Voidboy using his teleport at the right time to make Dignitas think they had a numbers advantage. And if they keep doing that, Curse is going to keep winning this game. Murmana finished up here for Cutie Pie. He's going to get that damage that he has been looking for. A little bit of a burst for him there. The past three ultimates, I believe, have just been used to try and clear waves. That one was a Baron check. And it was a worthwhile Baron check, too, because if... Dignitas gave up Baron to Curse in a game that's slowly slipping away. It would probably put them over the edge. He will head back, grabbing red now. The super slow of the blue Ezreal has now come to fruition for him. Mm -hmm. Looks like he can start to initiate those fights with Qs now, getting them back in almost a second or less. Curse going straight for this dragon, knowing that Ezalt is down in the vision right now on to Dignitas, allows them to do it safely. 11 to five, 29 minutes into the game. The 4K gold lead, actually 3K gold lead, is into play here for Curse now. And also, with the Quicksilver Sash that Cop has just completed, everyone has an answer for Zed's death mark. Mm -hmm. Everyone who Scar would actually want to jump on. If Scar is willing to use all of his full burst combo on St. Vicious, Curse is gonna say okay, or if he goes for Edward, QSS gets rid of the death mark, Zanya stops the damage. This is a very difficult game for Scar to be a part of now. He has got his Hex Drinker. He hasn't even had time to really go for his second tier boots. He knows he has to build the damage. They're behind in those items. Zanya's is a good chunk of armor coming in for both mm -hmm. Boy Boy and Nijaki. So he's trying to get through that as you see him build the Last Whisper before those other items. Yeah, and they need the Black Cleaver to be completed somewhere as well since they're so heavy in physical damage. Yeah. I'm a cutie pie started with the Brutalizer, but he wants a Last Whisper first as well, and it's actually on Scar to get that Black Cleaver completed. Seeing what the fight will be, what mm -hmm. is Dignitas looking for these engages? So Dignitas is still trying to find Curse spread out, or they're hoping that Curse actually initiates a team fight. All the fights that Dignitas has had so far in the game have been them trying to dive onto Curse because they think Curse is undermanned, and then Boy Boy will come in behind them with the cannon ultimate and just finish the lockdown, whereas the dive actually hasn't been strong enough for Dignitas in the first place to actually finish off Copper St. Ficious. So what Dignitas really needs to do is not overdive, and I think they need to wait for Curse to try and initiate on them because the gold lead is still very manageable for them. And I think they still have the ability to outmaneuver Curse as long as they don't just continually jump in to their strongest point. And at the strongest point right now, you see things like Voiboy Boy picking up a blue elixir here. We're 30 minutes into the game, so that's definitely going to help. But you see elixirs come out when the team wants to win that fight definitively, make a, make a run for the inhibitors, something big to come off of that next one. We see, you know, NK Inc. on his carry junglers picking up red pots in the middle of the game. So Voiboy Boy is looking mm -hmm. for a big next fight with his team. And it does look like with the way Curse is roaming around, that they're the ones looking for a fight right. now, as they should be because they have a lead. But that is also exactly what Dignitas will need to turn around <laughs> the game. So this next fight could be very interesting. Dig themselves looking to get in here. Only the Ruby Sight Stone or the wards that they have right now to put on the map, and they may just have to back here. Edward with that Oracle's out over to Patoy. I believe he still has his. He has not been pushed out of that area. They will be right now, actually. Dignitas is going to have to call Scar to the back or back to the top side. You can see Void Boy's teleport is coming up shortly, so he has taken that roll back in the bottom lane. It's amazing how well the pacing of this game has fit Void Boy's teleport. 
Because Dignitas, despite normally playing chaotic games, hasn't been able to force any team fights after Void Boy's teleport is down, yet all the team fights Dignitas forces seems like the teleport has just came right back up. Dignitas, even though it's 32 minutes in, would actually want to accelerate this game. Because as long as they're relying on trying to catch Curse off guard, it's so much more difficult when the teleport's always up. With the early Zanyas, it kind of timed them out in the fights. They were always mm -hmm. able to stop the fight. They ever Dignitas comes up and they put Voiboy Boy and Nijaki on the front line, and mm -hmm. usually you kill those guys, but they can't do anything. So super helping, like as you were saying, it roll into the teleport every time, which is now up, and Voiboy Boy has passed the river, so he is getting quite close to that bottom second tier turret. And I can imagine the expectations that are on Curse right now. If we think about preseason when they picked up Edward, Everyone was expecting the world from this team. And the fact that they're 9-14, and 14, tied for 6th slash 7th place coming into the final game, they really have to perform. And a game like this that is this close against a team that they are competing with indirectly for the final playoff spot, especially since Coast lost in the first game, mm -hmm. is incredibly important for them. They can't make mistakes. Definitely see that Dignitas, I mean, any team will halt a little bit more when you don't get your carry the kills, but Dignitas more than not. Skara not being able to go in anymore. He's the one mm -hmm. who's usually saying, I'm not even in my final form yet, as he yep. goes in, gets multiple kills for his team. So Dig is definitely on the communication path of figuring out how to thwart what's happening right here in the bottom lane. And I'm wondering what Voiboy's plan is right here, since Curse would have had an opportunity to have a 4v5, since they knew there was no way Skara could follow up to that. But even so, Curse decided not to, because I think they recognize that if they overdive, they're still leaving themselves open, and they didn't even want to do that 4v5. Curse actually giving up a turret oh. here in the mid lane. Something we could see about the communication. Kiwi Kid's gonna get stuck though. Will they put themselves in a bad spot just because the turret went down? Kiwi Kid able to bounce out there with the ultimate. I don't think they'll have the crowd control to lock him in. They didn't get that for free, but Dignitas made out pretty good on that. Yeah, that was the mobility actually coming in for a pretty big benefit there for Dignitas. Uh -oh, Kiwi Kid uh -oh. took a whole bunch of damage. <laughs> What's the other? They're uh -oh. not going to get stuck. I, I no. thought they were going to try to head in and do a dragon and get caught on this, but dragon's not even up. They are fine. Curse really can't step out of the base to grab it anyway, so I'm just uh oh in here. Yeah. Kiwi Kid in the top lane. Still, actually, still, not even. He is now 100 near CS behind Yikes. Boy Boy. Let's see what he can That's do trouble. as they move up. He's 0 3 and 3 to the 1 0 and 5, so. Boy Boy having a good game on top of that, so the confidence is there. We saw Nien on Zac being the one with for sure initiations. Kiwi Kid's kind of using Let's Bounce right now to get out of these fights. Mm -hmm. Dignitas can't find those initiations that they've been, they've been looking for. Even with all the team fights that Curse has won, the goal lead is forever dwindling. This is a very important juncture. As Dignitas went Ooh. for the Dragon, Curse is going for Baron, and Unless they were willing to rush this down, they're not going to get it in time. This is something Dignitas is going to scout and be able to stop. So that is a dragon for Dig. Unless Curse stays on it for even longer, takes more damage, and now I feel like they're more vulnerable. They have to know they're sitting on a ward here. They don't have much vision on Baron, but all they need to know is that there is not a pile of Dignitas inside that pit. They do as Crumbs being very valiant. His attempt here goes up towards Cop. And I think he's just going to dance it out. And this is another force from yep. Dignitas pushing up the mid lane. This is where the game has actually went wrong for Dignitas in the past when they try to dive when Voivo isn't there. This time they get a bunch of turret damage and then pull back away. Very good move there by Dig. Deja vu for both of these teams. Curse also trying to make plays as well as the calls are back and forth. There's always one person trying to make that move. The Baron was thwarted. The bottom turret has finally been grabbed by Curse. I think they came out on top of that one. I really wonder how much Voiboy is going to be able to continue this split lane push since his teleport is up and threatening while Curse has tremendously fast Baron killing potential when you factor in Karthus and Nasus. Yeah. Dignitas is in an incredibly tough spot right now. And so much turret done to the or so much damage done to that bottom turret. Voiboy able to teleport to the fight if they need to still. Kiwi Kid on the outside. Yeah,
side. This is almost a 4v5 that they're forced into. Here comes the teleport coming in from uh, Foy Boy. He is going to be on the outside of the fight, and it looks like he won't even get to help here. Pushing out Cutie Pie does get that kill. Cops able to drop down Kiwi Kid. Those two go down in a chaotic fight. And Scar was not even close because he was the answer to Foy Boy, who teleported in. But Curse is low, and Dignitas is going to go in for a they fight. They get the grab on Crumbs. They throw down the Requiem right off the bat from the fountain. Scar, a very low. He gets shut. Or he gets the shut down on Cop before going down. Good goal there going to Scara. Very much needed. Patoy will go down, but he is going to get the kill on Foy Boy. He gets shut down gold as well. The pockets are just getting too heavy here for these players. Crumbs is so into close. 2v1. They have 300 health combined against his 250. Oh, Nageki no. walking into the fight. Cannot pinch them. The rappel goes up. It looks like he will finally go down on the outside for the ace. Wow. That was a whole bunch of action. It looks like Curse since it was a clean ace, even though they're very low, is going to go for this Baron afterwards. Huge turn of events for Curse, and big calls had to be made during that fight. That was crazy. That was like an extended Baron attempt. The Curse had stopped, and they brought it back right after they chose their own adventure on you that You know one. what? They can't get it. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Saints quite low. Saints a little bit low, and Kiwi Kid's rushing towards it. I just got to talk a little bit about all the chaos that happened in that last Baron fight because the 4v5 wasn't actually that clean for Curse. So Voiboy, here we're going to actually have a replay of it. Um, this is the three men that came in after the fight. But Toyland is a very good crescendo, and it actually looked like Dignitas might be able to turn this one around a little bit. But Saint, Voiboy, and Edward together managed themselves quite well and ended up getting multiple kills out of it. Such a crazy fight, and to think that Nijack, he ulted from base, so they didn't have his full power within that engagement. But also, Dignitas was scattered themselves in that fight. So, a little bit of an unbalanced from the Requiem, people may say. No, yeah. <laughs> the balance of the Requiem <laughs> affected that a little bit. And Jackie is getting very close to that Rabadon's death cap, whereas Dignitas actually has the double black oh cleaver as well. So, that's very powerful armor shred coming through. And now with no teleport up and Scar split pushing, it's a dangerous situation Curse is putting themselves into once again here. I wonder if Dignitas is going to be able to get a fight here. Curse can't just take a bunch of damage at Baron there. Look at the poke. And you know, something that we you have to realize here is that Crumbs is going for a carry jungle build here. Straightforward. Abyssal Scepter, Haunting Guys, Sork Boots. Mm -hmm. He is trying to get the kills out. They're letting Kiwi Kid be a full tank for this team. And that build is even helping Kiwi Kid do an extra bit of damage. Because even though Kiwi Kid didn't yeah. go Sorcerer Shoes, he's got the Magic Pen coming through. Mm -hmm. This is an incredibly tense Baron, though, for Dignitas, because Ooh. there's fights going on in top lane as well. They pause. It looks good. Scar is going to back out. Voivod backs out as well. They're going to call that out. They know Scar is not in the fight up at Baron, and they once again back off. A top lane push across the river is going to help Curse here to stop any quick mid-engagement as both teams reset. Here's the cute thing about what Scar just did. <laughs> His death mark outpaces Zhonya, so Scar wants to stay up top, which is actually why Curse is pushing him out right now, because they want to kill him. Got a little bit of aggression going on. Tinkatos like is just going to try to take Baron here. St. Ficious is nowhere to be found. Scar is going to hotshot this one, if you will. Run around, cause the distraction. They do have Saint down. There is no smite coming in. Crumbs is very low, though, so if they can get these ultimates in, if Boy Boy can get in, he does not have Flash. He does not have ultimate, but they might be able to drop Kiwi Kid here. The Ignite hits. That is not going to be a Cell Division passive for him. And Curse, stop another Baron. This game has gotten a little bit silly. They keep going for Baron as the split pushes are coming out, and no one is close to this creating this Baron from going down. The don't say the B word. They're saying it a lot right now, <laughs> because Scar is all about the split pushing, and then Curse is apparently about a two because St. Fish has decided to chase after Skara near the end of that fight, which then prompted Dignitas to try to go for a Baron, but they didn't have the firepower to do it because Skara wasn't there. This is absurd. Five people in this game at a 300 CS clip, some almost hitting 400 right now, and it's still a 100 deficit for Kiwi Kid versus Voiboy. We've seen that in the fights. The initiations aren't fully there from Kiwi Kid, but it's just been the factor of Curse keeping that keeping Dignitas yeah. on their heels for the initiations in general. And so much is on the line for both of these teams. You can tell in the way they're playing. They're making very dangerous decisions because they want the game to swing. Even though Curse is up 17 kills to 7, look at how close the gold is right now. It is still anyone's game. I'm a cutie pie. Even though he's 1, 2, and 3, 
is reaching some incredibly potent items for the type of game that Dignitas wants to play. They want to poke around, skirmish, win the long fight, spread around the outside, and that's what that build is going to be able to let him do now that he's Ooh. completing it. This is getting actually very good for Dignitas. Skara just picked up the Guardian Angel, mm -hmm. so he's... Now, somewhat on the level with what they can do with the Zanyas, he can also wait this out and cause that chaos in the fight. 17 to 7 here. We've said, even though Curse went 0 and 3 last week, they were on top of their games with a slight mistake in the end. That's still open to happen, but they have slimmed it down significantly. And Dignitas has been better in close games right. than Curse has. That's the main reason that curses behind Dignitas in the standings. They both have the same amount of blowouts they're getting blown out. They typically both actually play a lot of really close games. And the Baron is not something oh, either team has actually had much success with. St. Vicious because he's had a very poor track record with the Smites, and Dignitas because they lost a lot of games going for Baron, which makes it all the more curious why Baron is such a priority for these teams right now. One of these teams, usually this is Dignitas that what Curse is doing, dictating that quick lane push, pulling somebody off the objective and making them cover a turret. They're going to go three strong mm. here. Voidboy knows it's going to be hard to fight that now. He goes on with a death mark, throws it down. The Zanya is right away. He may outtime that. No, it lasts for it. It looks like he's outlasts the Slicing Maelstrom. But the fight is going on at the other side as well. Chaos has emerged. The turret did go down. Nijacky very low, but he gets himself into a perfect spot to just deal AOE damage. And you see Dignitas have to disengage the fight. The shutdown onto Nijacky. The Requiem comes down from Death Defile. And it looks like it's going to do some good damage. Enough to pick up a few more. Curse has to keep going, though, because Skara has killed Voiboy and is making a push happen of his own. They've lost that inhibitor turret, but they can't get the inhibitor. How far can Skara go? Continuously pushing onto that lane, and he will start to put damage on the inhibitor. This is not something that Curse got. And now it's all about whether I'm a cutie pie and Krubs can chase far enough to get Skara out of the base. Overall, wow. despite that being a two for one, Dignitas wins that exchange. Huge win on that exchange, especially until that inhibitor respawns. So they have a lot of time to work with here. That means from the farthest point of Baron, unfortunate for Curse, they probably can't engage that anymore. Doesn't because look of that like, inhibitor. Uh, it's, it's now a battle because up until just now, Voidboy had been destroying the rest of Dignitas with map pressure. But if Scar puts himself to a point where he can duel Voidboy through his Zanyas, which he absolutely did there, that means Dignitas regains the control and negates the power of Voidboy's teleport. Dignitas has definitely been acting a lot faster than previously. They know Cutie Pie has that ability to kite now. All of that crowd control from Crumbs and Kiwi Kid can effectively come into play. And they just kited out 19 to 9. So only a few kills there picked up mm -hmm. for Dignitas. But the inhibitor, like we said, was huge. Keeping the game within 2,000. Definitely leaving it to anyone's chance. Six to six on turrets, leave five for each team. Who's going to be the first one to the Nexus? Yeah, the kills do not tell the story of this game not either. Not at all. And for Dignitas, they put themselves in the initial hole because they were trying to turret dive onto Curse. Scar needs to continue split pushing, and then Dignitas actually does need to continue to play around this Baron Shirelius. if they want to make something work. Just looking for a little speed boost to Wasn't get down the lane. Was Ooh. not enough. From the backside, the wall goes down to Crumbs. He actually heads up. I think that death sentence was just out of range. This is the type of fight Dignitas wants because they can do a slow chase with Ezreal. They might continue on or just peel off for something else. Ooh, they had a great split there, but too much terrain was put between them and the engagement after that lantern. So a very nice disengage by Edward just in safety. And oh dear, such a dangerous <laughs> moment here. All the AoE damage from Curse in this tight corridor. And unless Dignitas gets a perfect initiation, this fight's not going to work. They go into Edward. They know with that crowd control, the team won't be able to help too much. Cutie Pie walks through the wall. Giant Jackie flashing into the fight, but nobody's on the zone. And it and looks like Boy Boy from the backside. Will he be able to do enough? The crescendo hits him while he's in Zanya's. Two have fallen for Dignitas. It's only Nijacky. Patoy goes down there. A third one. Skara and Cutie Pie running for their lives, but looking to keep them off the Baron. Do they have what it takes? There's still two main damage dealers up for Dignitas, even though they are both very low. I'm a Cutie Pie's going to do everything he can to stop this. Curse getting very lucky right now off a of minion spawn in the base. Going to stop those super minions. They have the time to try and fight this Baron out. Cutie Pie with good damage from the outside, but they are not able to keep it going. That fight 
was exactly what Curse had been waiting for again and again in this game. When Dignitas tries to dive onto Curse, it ends up poorly for them. Let's take a look at how this fight happened. Their initiation was not ideal. Watch the teleport from Boy Boy. Immediately, Dignitas could not dive in because they realized doing so would catch them in all the AoE. Even though the Varus ultimate didn't land, the Crescendo could not come in properly because of all the other lockdown and Curse just chased through. The Zanyas are wreaking havoc in this game. A simple press of the button negated two full ultimates, Crescendo mm -hmm. and Deathmark. Boy Boy coming in huge with that teleport. Curse again using that window of Requiem and teleport to take a huge fight. 23 to 10, still a demanding lead. But this should be a demanding lead at this point. Curse should be able to win these fights now. Dignitas yeah. isn't letting that happen. Yeah, here's the crazy thing about Curse with an advantage now. Is Curse has only been able to get advantages when Dignitas thinks Dignitas has an advantage. <laughs> so how does Curse capitalize on anything? Because they haven't been able to do it in 47 minutes. Even with all that just happened, Voiboy still can't deal with Scar in a split push scenario. So Curse would essentially have to win a 4v4 diving into the base of Dignitas in order to make something happen in this game. And I don't know if they can do that. They have the Nasus, but combined with that, Oh, we oh, got the Scar. Really the Flash Crescendo going in. St. Vicious is the focus. He actually gets the Death Mark too. Scara uses it on something he knows it's going to hit. It works out there. The one for one so far in the fight. Will they decide to continue? Void Boy is very low. They Crescendo, yeah, the Crescendo out. They Shirelli is out of that one to stay safe. And I think this just slows things down for a little while. Dignitas tried to catch Curse by surprise because they knew Nijaki wasn't in the area for that one. But it was still just a one for one. It got the Baron off of someone and delays whatever Curse had planned. But as we were saying, I don't know if Curse actually has anything planned because it doesn't seem like their team has the capabilities to deal with Skara or the mobility of Dignitas right now. And Skara nailed it on the head there. He went for somebody he could actually do damage to that time. Without we a said chance he wasn't going to do it, but of, then he did Without it. a chance of it yeah. going down. They knew the damage is still going to count. And if it didn't work, he's still got another spell reel coming up after the Guardian Angel in the fight. Slowly grabbing kills, thwarting the attack coming in from Curse here. 24 to 11 now. The 4K deficit for Dignitas still has them up one turret. And that one turret also leaves an inhibitor open. So they're still working with this. And with Baron down in the map objective free, they can work every entrance to the base. And there is just a huge amount of gold in this game right now. 75K to 70,000. <clears> That's actually not much of a lead when you're dealing with this amount. Look, it's an 18,000 gold AD carry to a 17,000 gold AD carry. The mids are only 500 apart. These gold advantages only really matter when you're looking at Kiwi Kid versus someone else, because that's the only substantial actual item controlling difference where Kiwi Kid isn't sitting at items where he's working off wards and Void Boy is approaching an, an actual max item build. Everything else is so close in this match. And that, as you were saying, to Kiwi Kid, that Void Boy matchup is a 5,000 gold deficit. So a very big initiation there, but that's also something to look at for Curse. Their initiation, a lot of it is a walk-up initiation or a half to flash in initiation where you have Zack to come in, you have crumbs to repel, Scar to gap close. So they kind of have to telegraph or find a fight in the jungle here to really get it to go on their way. Yeah, it's, it's such a, there's a reason this game is 50 minutes long. And it's because these teams have incentives that are contradictory to each other. Dignitas has an incentive to try and dive, whereas Curse has a whole bunch of AoE, so they have to sit back, sit back and wait for, to, wait for him to come. But then, since Curse has a lead, the teams don't want to do either one, because Digni Curse wins by getting dove on, and Dignitas loses by diving, so what is actually going to happen next? We just got to wait and find out as soon as someone breaks or takes a risk and does a suboptimal play for their team. Well, Flash and that teleport both on a 300 second cooldown for Void Boy, and they are both about to come up at the same time. So that may be the window. The Requiem is also up. Looks like Curse's cop, his flash is up now. So they will be able to engage on something pretty big. Then again, everything for Dignitas, but Kiwi's flash is up. I don't think mm -hmm. he's gonna matter. Last six link shot to come in for that fight. So Curse waiting again, like I said, that jungle engage, that catch out, they have mm -hmm. to walk up the engagement. So Dignitas is definitely steering clear. Someone has to make a play in this game to create a cascading amount of action. Because there's so many buildings down, because the death timers are so long, and because there's so much gold in this game, any 
one big play can win the game entirely. So if Skara kills Voiboy again, or just starts dueling Voiboy, everything else is going to start happening. Curse is going to have to decide very quickly whether they want to continue to play defensively and still not have an answer for Skara's split push, or whether they want to take action into their own hands and just push up the mid lane, go for the inhibitor, and go for a win. But it's difficult for them because I'm a Cutie Pie's blue build Ezreal <laughs> is kiting it's so well at this point everything. in the game, which is why these teams are just locked right now and not able to make action happen. And we talked about telegraphing things earlier and, you know, how it kind of just walk it into a fight or do something. When you're down to the last turrets on your base, there's only so many things you can do. There's mm -hmm. only so many ways to stay unpredictable in your engagements. So it becomes even harder to get into the base. And that's what Dignitas is dealing with right now. Even under in gold, they're still making their way into the base, trying to stay unpredictable. And it's because Curse can't necessarily deal with Skara anywhere. So we've seen when Skara is in that side lane, St. Vicious is kind of cheating over there mm -hmm. to make sure Skara doesn't try any funny business. And then he just continues on his way. <laughs> This is going to be tight. This is an incredibly tight game, and so much is on the line for both of these teams. I am excited for this next fight because it will not be over shortly. It is going to be no. an extended team fight and definitely a test of the pressure that these players are under right now. 53 minutes in, that team fight probably is going to mean the game at this point. And Voiboy actually went for a Lich Bane, and I wonder if that'll put him over the top in dueling Skara. Wow. That's going to be. Hmm. Maybe more important than this 4v4 That's fight. That's interesting. If a 4v4 fight would even happen. The Lich Bane definitely helping for that personal engage as well as if they do win that fight, those turrets are going down fast. You have the Nasus, you have that Void Boy with the Lich Bane. These guys will be looking to destroy structures instantly. That 1v1 in the bottom lane still happening as Skara pressures. Looks like Void Boy will be able to hold it off, but here it is, Jat. The tango for Baron, probably the fifth or sixth one of the game. Yeah, there's a couple tangos going on right now. There's the <laughs> 1v1 and the 4v4. And when one starts, I actually feel like both fights happen at the same time. It's just we don't know when it's going to happen. They have to. They have, they have to, to keep to. Void Boy in Zanyas. They have to keep him from teleporting. Crumbs gets the wither, but they also do the cocoon on the backside. Not too much of an engage here. Cutie Pie hits the entire back line to slow down three. Kiwi Kid from the left side. This is the initiation they were looking for. The true shot barrage could come across. He will not be able to shoot that out. He actually used it earlier. Skara takes down the inhib. Yeah, so as we thought, the fights happen at the same time, and it looks like Dignitas oh! may have won both of them. He gets the catch on Edward, but it's not enough damage just yet with the build. Shoots on to Saint. Will they be able to get the second cocoon on? Yes, they hit another kill, or kill rather, coming in onto Edward for Skara. He goes inhibitor to mid for the kill and out. So the answer to the Lich Bane question of whether Voiboy Boy could beat Skara was no. no. He got obliterated. He didn't die, but he had to give up the inhibitor immediately. And then, as we thought, the chase skirmish potential of Dignitas when the AoE was split up due to the split push gave Dig the advantage there and they get their first Baron of the game now. That's going to be huge. Crumbs smiting that one out. Dignitas now to reset, get some purchases, clear this top lane and utilize a downed inhibitor in the bottom lane. So now, Riv, we're back into that situation again where Dignitas needs to dive on a curse for a team fight. Yes. I don't know if it's going to work out for him. <laughs> this is now the longest game of the season for Team Curse, as we just saw. Dignitas has another 15 minutes or so to go if they want to reach their 71-minute epic. But I can see it getting there with the way these teams are just locked into not being able to finish the game against each other. And you can see Curse filling up those inventory slots with the last of what they can. A thorn mail coming out for St. Vicious on top of the Randuins and the Visage and his Golem Spirit there. Like you said, the Lich Bane Rylas on Voiboy Boy trying mm -hmm. to split push as well as counter the split push that Skara has been able to find a way on top of. And these item builds, as they get closer and closer to just everyone being maxed, another GA on make the gold lead even less important. And if we start analyzing kind of exactly what these guys have built, yes, Voiboy Boy and Nijaki have incredible amounts of AoE damage. But unless they're actually landing that on multiple people, their overall DPS is quite low. Cop, max item 80 carry, but he doesn't necessarily have enough to shred through Kiwi Kid, who with Randwins in another ch another chain vest, maybe going towards a thorn mail, could actually end up hurting himself a little bit more than he deals. Right. I don't know, man. This one, it's... 
still going to be a close finish. Technically, is that going to burst back to Scar, though? Is that a significant amount of damage, especially with the Guardian Angel? I'm more worried about Cop if someone on Dignitas gets a Thornmill. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Scar is going to get hurt right. by St. Fish's Thornmill whatsoever. And I don't think I'm a Cutie Pie is going to be hitting St. Fish's. I don't think that Thornmill is actually that much of an effect mm -hmm. on Dig because Dig is very spell-based and the Thornmill returns auto-attack damage. Yeah. So they're not worried about that Thornmill. We'll have to see Nijacky not throwing down the wall just yet. Oh, he heard me. Throws down the wall, makes sure they can't get the rest of the damage, but that is only going to be a few more shots. I don't think Dig is going to leave without taking that one down. Yeah, and even though we showed the graph for their long, these teams' longest games, neither of these teams have won a game over 50 minutes this split. <laughs> So we're in uncharted territory for both of these guys. They're pulling out the new strategies. You can see the, the ace and the ace of spades coming out of the sleeve. We're running this one now. Zone two. Let's go for blue. Let's see what they tried to pull out here. The oracles coming out into crumbs. They are just spending the rest of the money they have, putting on the elixirs, getting ready for the final fights. Yeah, and Dignitas is hoping to catch someone out of position. But that is not something they've been able to do. As we can see, 12 kills to 24 in this game because Curse wins the team fights every time Dignitas has a slight edge. Dignitas is great at getting the edge, but they just can't finish them. Boy Boy has been getting handled by Scar for the last 20 minutes or so, so the more Dignitas can create that matchup, the better it is for them. Curse came into this game with first blood in the bottom lane. Good aggression there. We're able to keep the kill lead and still have that. But it seems like they may have been, if you will, cursed by that first blood coming mm -hmm. into this one. We'll have to see what Boy Boy is not trying to split push a lane, and all of the lanes right now are at the front door of the base of Curse, but they're trying to guard Ooh. the inhibitor. Look at the damage Cop just took as well. They have to go back and basically concede this. This is a huge step forward for Dignitas' team. This makes the rest of the lanes stronger as well in the way of minions. They get a bit stronger coming in now, so they'll be harder to fight, harder to pressure, and with a squad like Dignitas coming in the way they are with the Guardian Angels, it's going to be hard. This fight actually has to happen soon for Curse, right there, now. Jackie throwing himself in. He gets the flash there. Wouldn't really throw it on the Zanyas. He gets great positioning. Scar is toward the back line. This is going to be that Guardian Angel going down. Like we said, this is not going to be a fast fight. Scar actually makes it out. Cocoon by Saint. He walks right by. The Requiem comes down. Coming up for the double kill. Believe that Sound Division served for Zack. Technically, the triple kill coming in. They will finish that off. Crumbs doing what he can with Cutie Pie, but Curse has thwarted a base attack. It is not stopping, though. Crumbs forced to flash. He clicked on the, the golems closest to him. St. Vicious on to Cutie Pie. One last hit coming. A double kill. The shutdown for Comp and much needed gold for the team. And that wasn't even a Dignitas dive. That was just Curse chasing down Dig. The one huge benefit from that fight, though, was that Dignitas got down so many of Curse's turrets, but now Curse is going to be on a counterattack because 60 minutes in, those death timers are gargantuan, and there is a lot of damage still up for Curse as they try the counter push. This is huge. They do have Edward Shield. They have Saint on Nasus, who's pretty tanky. And most of all, that middle inhibitor taken down probably 20 minutes ago, or middle inhibitor turret rather, allows them to quickly are they get some go damage on some Nexus turrets. So Curse is going to try to get these Nexus turrets down. They do not have minions, so those turrets have backdoor bonuses right now. Crumb's trying desperately to fight them off. Seeing home guards now coming out on a lot of the members' feet here from Dignitas. Five seconds, seven seconds on Scar's these timers. They're going for that it's Nexus a race. turret. It's going to be a shot for it. They're going for the Nexus. It's going to be Curse. Scar's they went 0-3 last week. They don't want it to happen again, but they could be thwarted. Scar are doing big damage. How low is a it? A few more hits, and Curse is able to take the game at 60 minutes. Uh, they so we're up in kills the whole game. Dignitas could never finish them off, and they got the one team fight win near the end, and then they made the call. We knew a team was going to have to make a play to win this game, and that was one hell of a call to go for the Nexus. They were on the back foot so much for the, the end part of that game. They had the kills the entire time. 24 to 14, 17, 18. They were slowly racking up for Dignitas. Curse knew there was a final fight that they had to make happen. And like you said, you thought it was going to happen on that last turret. What, what else did they have to fight under they after had that to turret go. went down? They had to go. And they did. I mean, backs <laughs> against the wall, and they made a play in more ways than one. If they lost that game, they would still be tied for sixth and seventh place with, place with Coast. But when Curse wins that game... They put themselves right now one game ahead of Coast in that playoff race. 
huge victory achieved there by Curse. And we were talking about it earlier, the tension that will come into these games, the possibilities created by all of the variations that can happen. A 60-minute game now under the belt of Curse and Dig, and they have more to go on the week. It's going to be a bit strenuous. Yeah, uh, just a couple things about that game. There were three members of Curse over 21,000 gold. Skara had 23,000 gold on Zed. A lot of farming for that one, and even though they can get a little tedious, I love seeing games where teams are locked up against each other never really able to finish because that's when you really get to see the risk-taking that teams have to make in order to make a victory happen. Dig going for Baron, not something we see too often. Yeah, they had to do it. it almost worked. <laughs> had to, absolutely. All right, guys, we've got to take a short break, but when we return, we'll be joined by Curse's Cop to talk about their exciting, exciting final push victory, and then Velocity and Team Solomid square off in our third match of the day. The North American League, League of Legends Championship Series will be back right after this.